here we go, another day, another controversy in the comic book world. And this one comes from Dana Schwartz. Now, you might remember the name because uh, she was very controversial a couple of months ago when uh, she wrote, it seems impossible to overstate the cultural damage done by South Park. Oh, yes, Mio, what did South Park done? Uh, oh, yes, it mocked things. It ridiculed things. And, uh, well, it's perfectly okay, I guess, to ridicule Christianity uh, and ridicule capitalism and ridicule America. There are other things that are sacred, uh, such as Marxism and social justice. And because South Park ridiculed them, uh, Dan Schwartz didn't like that. And there was a, a, a publication I'm not going to promote on this channel. Uh, but it's part of the base to be the authoritative sources that gave her the platform uh, to write an entire disgruntled post about uh, the, the vicious treatment that she got on Twitter. Now, this seems to be the problem. These random nobodies are kept being given platforms. They're not building platforms. Like, no one knows who they are. They're just plucked boop, from the street. And then they're gone to work at Marvel. They're, they're writing and... Uh, all of these mainstream media outlets and they can't handle it because they're complaining. It's like, oh, look, people on Twitter are upset at me. It's like, yeah, if, if these companies wouldn't give you platforms, uh, no one would know about you and you could spow your political ideas and biases uh, without getting any sort of pushback. Like, no, no one wants to give pushback to like some random girl on Twitter. But when you're working at Marvel, you're a public person now. And, you know, like your opinions might reflect those of the company, some would say. Uh, it's okay. It's not. It's not going to last for long. Um, the, the economic crisis is going to come, and Marvel won't be able to afford uh, having these types of people. Um, you know, like it's it's the wrong industry, really. If if you want to be a political commentator on a late night show, it's okay if you're a little bit controversial, because at least you get people hate watching you. Uh, but when you're working for a company like Marvel. Giving sass to the consumer and treating like the consumer is this necessary evil is going to get people not to buy your book. And these people really need to change up their marketing strategy. I mean, I need to read the definition of insanity to them. If you try the same thing over and over and it doesn't work, maybe you should change it. Because what they do is that they post something incredibly provocative. And then when people uh, give them the backlash... They're going to shift three mana and play the victim. It's like, oh, I'm not allowed to have an opinion. It's like, yeah, you are, but other people are allowed to have an opinion on you. It works both ways, poopsicans. Um, but I guess like that, that's what they do, right? They, they want to show, oh, look, I'm the victim, buy my comic. If you buy my comic, you're going to stick it to the haters. Look, he, here's a different marketing strategy. Like, may I suggest one, right? Like, this, this is how the lady looks like. All right. Why not make a YouTube channel? And you show your comic book and you're going to be like, oh, so I'm so excited. Like my new comic book is coming out and I'm really happy about it. And this is why. And, and, and it's got like this cool thing in it. And oh, please buy my comic. Mwah, 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 mwah. Like, if I were to look like this, this is how I would sell my shit. And I guarantee to you, my shit would sell faster than Daphne's bathwater. Like just just get Daphne or or how how is it brought Daphne Daphne whatever you know just just get her at Marvel, like she can just rub her titties on a couple of comic books and they would sell, like she can make the unsellable sellable. She can sell oppression to the communists. She can sell ice to the Eskimos. I mean the woman can sell her own bath water, you know like that that is the level that she is operating on. And then you have like these people still using the same uh, board marketing tactics, right? But anyway, right, so what, what is she doing now? Well, this is something that uh, the comic book pros at Marvel have created. This is something that doesn't exist. It's a social construct. <laughs> it's a Marvel social construct. Fan gatekeeping. So this is like the, the brain dead idea. I don't even know how to mock it because it mocks and ridicules itself. It's why South Park hasn't touched it. Like there's nothing else you can add. But it's the idea that, that they believe that... Because I don't like something, right? Like, I don't like comic books, let's say. And I hate comic books. I am somehow preventing other people from purchasing comics. Like, can you not explain to me how this is supposed to work? Like, you know, I, I grew up in a very difficult environment to be a geek. Like, oh, 
When you would go to the girl that was the most sexy in the class and you would tell her that you play computer games, she would be like, uh, do you play computer games? When are you going to grow up? Like, real men don't play games. Uh, I'm going to go with Josh out now because he plays football, right? So, so like, despite the fact that the overwhelming amount of people around me disliked video games because I was passionate about them, I still like them. I, I don't care what other people think. And I'm willing to assume that this is how most human beings behave. Like, if, if something that you really like isn't shared by other people, you don't care. You literally don't care. You're just going to buy the thing that you like and you're going to partake into the activity that you enjoy. Like, for example, uh, giving criticism to this lovely lady seems to not be very popular, yet people do it nonetheless. You know, it's like, oh, there is this uh, toxic fan gatekeeping and uh, laughing and mocking the people working at Marvel. <laughs> oh, yeah. So she is complaining about this thing that is called, uh, I, I guess, the fake geek. Um, and these people believe that there is no such thing as a fake geek. I mean, you, you have fake money. You have fake tits. Uh, you, you have fake ego. Like, there is a fake of everything. I, I don't think, like, there is something in the world that doesn't have a fake. But I am led to believe that the fake geek girl doesn't exist. Um, the definition of a fake geek girl, by the way, uh, it's a girl, but most often a guy, who likes to get into a medium in order to talk about social justice. Like, they're not really interested about the medium, whatever that be, like knitting, video game. They, they don't care, all right? They're not there in order to participate in the hobby or in the entertainment that everyone else is there to do. No, they, they ju are just there in order to gain power, like moderator status, uh, junior editor, or something like that. Uh, get money, if possible. And most importantly, lecture other about social justice. Right? This is what a fake geek is. And most people understand what a, what a fake geek is. And, and like, it's, it's really the same. Like It's, it's so on the nose. It's like having a guy that wants to pick up chicks and joins a feminist rally. Like, most feminists will understand that he has nothing to belong there. Like, they, they will get the vibe from that individual that is not there to participate in an honest discussion. And they're going to ostracize that person. It's really the same what is happening with these people when they get into the comic book industry or the video game industry or whatnot. Like, people are pointing on that they're looking on her Instagram, and there is no mention that she is passionate about comics. And in a medium where frauds are spotted like criminals, how do you truly believe you'll write something interesting? Right? And, and she was like, men really need to take a deep breath. Um, it's on Twitter, lady. Like, <laughs> people don't get, people can breathe just fine when typing. And not, not to mention, why are you giving this guy attention? Who is Juicy Revival? That you need to respond to words. Like, why are you responding towards the trolls unless you want this level of attention? Like, unless you want to start into the bounding into comics article. There is really no need. It's like, this guy is a potential customer. And even if he isn't, when you attack him, it looks like you're attacking the entire community and other people that think like him. And I guess, like, this is the problem with Marvel. They, they don't care about making money anymore. Like, the only thing they care about uh, is ostracizing their consumer base. So, yeah, I mean, it's just, like, so, so obvious that these people aren't passionate about comic books. Um, which, which is sad. I mean, again, even if I'm not passionate about math, the moment you get hired into a company and you're making money, you can learn about math. You can dedicate some time in order to learn about it, but nope. Uh, and of course, you know, it's like, oh, the male writers deal with this. Uh, no, my cock prevents me from getting criticism on Twitter, believe it or not. It's, it's like a shield. You know, I just put my cock into the computer and it acts like a firewall. It, it, it's just like on the internet, if you are a man, you are in power. No one is going to criticize you. But alas, you know, you're a woman. I, I suggest you change your gender. Change your gender and you're going to stop dealing with this. And oh damn, it's it's almost 10 minutes long, so I guess I need to cut this short. Um, but look at another hot take, right? Uh, the current pandemic is going to be like Rise of the Skywalker. It's a nightmare. It's going to be a struggle. 
But then we're going to get to come the other side and pretend it never happened. Um, I mean, considering that you work for Marvel and chances are you're going to lose your job because the comic industry, just like the tourist industry and uh, the service industry is going to collapse. I I'm not really sure you can pretend that it never happened. But I would like to pretend that your tweet has never happened. And I think I'm going to be able to manage to do it.